and welcome back to Gay Fat Friend and Friends, the podcast. The podcast for steamy, sweaty boys. Oh. It's so hot in here right now, you guys. Um, we had a power failure last night. We had a giant thunderstorm in Seattle, which never happened. It was so fun and scary. And there was one lightning strike that turned the power off for 0.2 seconds. Like it, enough, was, it was a flash. Yeah, enough for the microwave to lose the time, but not for the oven to lose the time. Correct. But it reset every single digital thing in our home. Uh, uh, one being our little room air conditioner, which I have set up to always be on high, cool, lowest temperature. <laughs> well, it reset the air conditioner to fan 74. And so I turned it on without thinking. And yeah. it's just hot in here. Like it's it didn't fine. it didn't cool a bit. And, uh, I also had a bottle of wine last night. So I'm very sweaty. Anyway, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, gay fat friend, aka Todd. And joining me as all's as all do i know words and joining me as always is my teeny tiny little husband rob hi babe uh, hello how's your morning going good yeah yeah i mean it's it's uh, it's fine it's it's fine great like i've i've done <laughs> fine what, is better than bad right I, I feel like i've accomplished what i've wanted to get done although i didn't enjoy those tasks but like that's not up to me because one of the tests was watching a movie and the movie i watched wasn't very good and it's oh not, yeah and it's like, not what worth, did you even do and it's not worth getting into on this on the podcast because it was just it was a movie meant to shock and gross and you know gross you out and uh succeeded but also was terrible and otherwise i would say completely unredeeming and i don't say that about many movies <laughs> i'm usually willing to find something there yeah. this lacked it not worth discussing. Well, you have recently discovered all the free streaming, like C and D level horror films yeah. on like AMC Plus. Well, it's like they're not free, but like, yeah, we're paying for one month of AMC app. Plus. Yeah. Like one month of it we're paying for. And so I was like, well, God damn it. I'm going to watch a whole bunch of movies on here that I would normally never watch. And it it's funny because a lot of the stuff on there is also on Shudder, which I did have for a while and I really liked. Um, but I yeah, also, we, I stopped paying for it. I though. forget why we had Shudder. There was like two Shudder exclusive releases that oh, went kind of viral. It was literally, uh, I think it was uh, the, the Bone Woman, that, that, that movie. Uh, the pregnancy one? Yes, yeah. uh, and like the first, the actual name of it was a, a word in Spanish, and I forgot what it was. But like uh, the the subtitle was the Bone Woman, and that was a Shutter original, and it was like supposed to be coming to Shutter for like months. They kept saying, "Oh, it's coming! Oh, it's coming! Oh, it's coming!" And it took like three or four months. But I paid for a year of Shutter, so it was fine. Um, and there was like one other thing. Well, and we also did that streaming thing that we always do whenever we get a new streaming platform or we like start digging into streaming platforms. We found 20 things we wanted to watch and then we never went back and watched them. Yeah, well, I fell asleep to probably eight to 10 of them. <laughs> uh, if there were 20 there, I fell asleep to uh, many of them by myself. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, it's weird. I've I've also, I don't know, I, I've, yeah, with AMC, it's like, it's getting a second chance at watching a lot of those things that made into the shutter queue that I never watched. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm being bold. I'm jumping in with both feet and it's like, hell, I will watch the super questionable stuff. Uh, and now I'm realizing why it's questionable and why I was, why, why I didn't watch it. Yeah. We had to, uh, sign up for AMC plus because I just binged the two available seasons of interview with the vampire, Yay! which is one of my favorite movies of all time. And Rice's vampires, I think are my favorite vampires. And so I kept putting it off and putting it off a, I want to binge a whole season, like when it's available. So I always wait till everything's available to watch a TV show, but then I always forget that they exist. So I missed the first season completely. Um, and then the second season just ended last month. So yeah, I was like, you know what? It's time. I got two seasons worth of stuff to watch. I need to watch it. You got like, and what, 16 is... episodes of binging right there? Yeah, it was so good. It's so gay. If you just need gay vampire realness in your life, watch that show. It's so good. Um, when, sorry, quick tangent. As a physical media uh, supporter, kudos to uh, whoever the production company is that makes this show for getting it on home video like i know that they're actually oh. doing blu-ray like not 4k blu-ray but still they're doing blue blu-ray home video oh, nice. releases and uh season two is coming out and they already did season one so like oh good we should just bought them no that's fine i mean we didn't know if you'd like it or not and if you like True. it and want to rewatch, now is like this is the time to commit um but yeah anyway sorry i i appreciate a tv You're show fine. that puts like value into its and like shows pride in its work and finds yeah. the audience because there is a home video audience there is well the movie is still my favorite uh version just because you know it was like 
peak 90s brad pitt tom cruise it was just so kirsten dunst and i are almost the same age like it was just a, a perfect time in my life and it really like tattooed itself on my brain so i really am still always going to love the movie more but Which, the show is really good it's funny because yeah we've talked about this like i've seen the movie a handful of times a long time ago and i remember very little of it but it's weird the one thing that i'm always it's and we didn't, we didn't I didn't talk about this before. The one thing that always kind of blows my mind is how much that movie, for in my opinion, ruined the appeal of Antonio Banderas. I feel like every other person, it kind of leaned into who they were and vampired them up a bit. Antonio Banderas lost so much of what makes him super attractive oh, to me. Oh, because he wasn't Puss in Boots in it? <laughs> yes. No, I don't know. There's some, there's something... Or Zorro? But no, also, I feel like even like what they did to his features and stuff, they, they kind of took away a lot of, of what makes him handsome, even. Oh, there was something, that, there was this something is kind my of favorite odd. Antonio Banderas. It's funny, because I feel like I need to see it again, maybe now, as like a, as, you know, like a out and proud adult, and like yeah. really, like, really fully appreciate the beauty that's in that movie, because like, yeah. I can even appreciate on paper that it's all there. I... But also, we may have talked about this. I don't think that Brad Pitt is very attractive when he has long hair. All right, get out of here. No, it's, leave. He, he looks so good with short hair. Like he's a, <laughs> like you know even like or like the Meet Joe Black kind of like long, but like uh, crop. A Brad Pitt in a tight pony. Give it to me all day long. <laughs> That's <laughs> Legends of the Fall, Interview with the Vampire. I think um, one of my favorite or one of the reasons why it's it's one of my favorite movies is because it took very masculine actors and made them very femme and submissive but also powerful you know because they're vampires well and vampires are very and they'll queer, kill you they're very queer coded anyway yeah uh it was around the same time as tu wong fu like they were taking a lot of like straight masculine hollywood actors and just putting them in these roles that appealed to me and my <laughs> sensitivities i loved it um but yeah what i was going to say about the show is uh it so yeah it's 16 episodes and the first season is like kind of all new orleans and then the second season is when they go to europe and so every episode something from the movie would happen in an episode and i'd be like oh this is when they're doing this and rob would just look at me and be like uh-huh and i was like oh you don't really know the details of this film do you <laughs> yeah I, I remember like seriously like seven like distinct visuals from the movie probably and i i remember some character names if you tell me like if you gave me a handful of names and actors, I can probably place them just by process of elimination on a few of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like there's, it's yeah, it's just one of those movies that kind of just uh, washed over me. Like yeah. it happened and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, and the show hits all the major beats of the movie, but they obviously rewrote it hardcore. I mean, it's over a hundred years later when everything happens. And um, I was excited to see Grey Worm from Game of Thrones. Oh, who's he's so good. Whose name I don't, I feel terrible. J what? Jacob Anderson. Yeah, I was gonna say it's uh, Jacob. Yeah, and like he, um, he's, he's so beautiful. he's like a he's a beautiful British DJ and musician and actor, and he was Grey Worm in and Game he, of Thrones. When he does modern day Louis during the interview segments, he channels parts of Brad Pitt that you can hear it in his voice, and like, oh, uh, he's so dreamy. It's great, excellent casting. Um, I'm curious, does he always have the the contacts? In? So in the TV shows universe, everyone's eyes change to like a very yellow, red, blue, hazel, but like a very intense eye color. Is it only when the fangs are out? No, it's when they change. Like it's w when they go from human to vampire. Okay. So it's forever. Got it. Um, oh, okay. So it is like a, a switch that gets flipped and they never like yeah. always. Okay. So that's why a lot of vampires wear sunglasses and stuff. But uh, also it's funny, like Claudia's eyes turned red and mm -hmm. they're always just blood red. And she just like exists in society and no one's ever like, oh, you have a very unnatural eye color. Hey, I feel like no one questions gray or purple eyes. Yeah. You know, it just is special. But uh, anyway, continue. But so, but like that's, I, you're saying in the book, it's that, or the movie, it's that, right? Or is it in the show too? Uh, in the show, it's that their okay. eyes change. I don't like, they have different color eyes in the movie, but it's not like pronounced. Like they almost did the anime contact lenses where they're like a little bit bigger than mm. their natural iris too. Got so it. Um, everybody's irises get bigger and turn like red or yellow. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Just curious. And they all get very cunty nails. They've all got just a <gasps> nice acrylic set. Oh, their inner come baddie like a, comes out. Yeah. Their inner baddie comes out. Oh, they're, they're doing a lot of like, uh, Ariana Grande, like you know, sleeve oh, over the, the hand, sleeve. but with the long nails, just like putting together a dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, they 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 are the nail painting emoji with the pink nails. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, they don't address the eye change or the nail change. When you get changed into a vampire, it just happens, but then they have them forever. So everybody's just got like a nice little acrylic set. All right, then. Well, and that feels like uh, easily stereotypable if they ever go into like, you know, the politics of vampires and humans, true blood territory. Like, it just feels like, you know, they it's a lazy stereotype that you could say against all vampires that they got their, you know, their nails. Oh, they all have And their set. eyes. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. like it's like South Park uh, Canadians having the, the flappy heads. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. If it was in the true blood universe, they would have a slur, you know, called like about their eyes or their nails right away. Right, yeah. <laughs> about those claws. Um, but yeah, if you've been on the fence, if you've been thinking about watching the show, do it. It's really good and it's worth it. Um, speaking of watching things, we saw another movie in a theater. Which, I mean, seriously. Who are we? What? Three in a week? But it's funny. I feel like there's a handful of movies that we just kind of know are going to happen. It's like when, yeah. when the Candyman reboot happened, we were like, cool, this is a movie well, and like, it's either, we're going to see. It's either for spoiler reasons or it's for production reasons. It's yeah. rarely that they both intersect. It's usually like, we have to see this right now because everyone's going to tell us who the killer is. Yeah. Or we need to see this uh, right now because it has the best sound design of any movie. Yeah. But so we saw Alien Romulus this weekend, which we saw for spoiler reasons. We saw the very yeah. first showing available at our theater on Friday morning. Yeah. Which I guess technically we could have gone Thursday night. Which I apparently guess. everybody did. Like everybody was posting reviews at 7 p.m. on Thursday. And we we're like, where did you see this? So our least, theater didn't show it. I didn't have to stick my head in the sand for very long, but... But still, uh, yeah. Well, also, you you made it a point to not watch the trailer, which, which was... we went back and watched the trailer after the movie, and I was like, "Oh shit!" The trailer gives so much away. Yeah, which and seriously, like, and I hate, hate to be that guy, but like, my my eyes are so trained to like contextualize teeny tiny clips, and it's just and it's a thing where my brain starts assembling that puzzle, and I hate it because I just want to turn it off. I just want to see a movie and be surprised. Sometimes I and, love like, trailers because I'm just excited well, about film and stuff. Well, but I, I also I'm like, wait a minute, they showed Kristen Wiig punching that one guy in the face, and that hasn't happened yet. So I know that that's coming, you know, like my right. brain always does. Well, that. and like, and I, it's just, and I love the art of the trailer. I really do. Like I, you know, professionally have kind of, you know, worked in that field for a while and I, I like the art of the trailer. I really do. Um, but also at the same time, there's a handful of franchises that I just want to be shocked. And I think alien is that franchise that like, I still wish I could have been in a theater in the early, in the late seventies and seen that movie and just not, seen what it does coming mm -hmm. like i can't imagine the level of surprise of just a handful like psycho alien there's a handful of movies that i think are just these these kind of moments in time that changed how people saw movies in theaters and i don't know i would have loved to have been part of that and uh the first alien movie that was actually appropriate for me to be that i was age appropriate to see in theaters was resurrection and just due to situations i missed it in theaters so i think the first alien movie i ever saw in theaters was prometheus like that wasn't like a re-release because i did see alien the original in theaters i've seen it a couple times now um we saw aliens in the theater live like when it happened yeah um because you know it growing up in my house because oh, you would you had older brothers, I had too. Older brothers yeah um you know and a and a movie loving dad um but growing uh, growing up in my house our big three like literally the big three were terminator predator and alien and so uh we had all of those movies on tape on vhs or laser disc i think we had the original alien on laser disc um but uh yeah so those were the big three so we always like saw all of them repeatedly watched like one of them every weekend like there was always like predator or terminator on in the background growing up so that's why i have like the first two of all of those memorized practically um but yeah, I want to say, well, and it's also my mom's favorite franchise because, oh. you know, Sigourney Weaver's her favorite actress. Oh, and, I know that. Uh, yeah, Sigourney Weaver's my mom's favorite actress and she, she just, you know, strong, powerful woman killing aliens. My mom just loved it. Yeah. Well, and it's so weird because like, I don't, um, it, it's strange that I judge like a franchise on a curve, but it is so weird. Like the alien franchise, if you ask, you know, the, the hardcore purists, they're like, eh, they've never been good since aliens, you know, like the first two are the only ones that mattered. And it's like, I didn't have any idea to pay attention to the franchise until the third one. Cause that came out when I was what, 10. And, um, I saw it like on a home video and I was like, this is really cool. And then I went backward and, um, it took me a while to appreciate the first one. And, but it's weird, though. The second one, I just didn't love that it was an action movie. And I will give you, it is a fantastic action movie. It is James Cameron doing what he does. And I get why people love it. It wasn't scary. 
Yeah. And so for me, it, it lost the alien mojo. But like, it, I totally recognize it's as an action movie, it is fantastic. Huge world building movie. Like, there's a lot there, but like a lot of people say that it fell off after that. I think Alien 3 is super fun for what it is. I like them all. That, right? Alien Resurrection might be, my, I think, the most watchable for me of the entire series. I, but also, I love Jean Pierre Jeunet and I love the cast, you know? And then, like, Prometheus. I don't care if it's messy. I loved it. I thought it was cool. I, it's beautiful. I like, mean, it has Charlize Theron in it. Covenant is probably the one that's full of the dumbest people that make the stupidest mistakes. And yeah. it's fine. Put that, Get that meat for the grinder. I'm excited. I, I really liked Covenant, too. Covenant like, went in a direction I was I, I didn't like, but I still liked it as a film. Yeah. I still had fun. I thought it was cool. Yeah. I, I had such and, a good time. Yeah. Prometheus, I think, is the most beautiful of all of them. Yeah. Because well, like, it has Logan Marshall Green in it. <laughs> who's that? The, the guy who's like diet Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The guy we saw at Swingers one time when we were having brunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he ate behind us. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, what was... Oh, but that's what I wanted to talk about. So I've seen a lot of reviews on TikTok, which first of all, I generally hate reviews, like people that like give like five stars, you know, um, I hate critics, but I, I feel like it's really pretentious sometimes. But... I will still watch them from time to time. And I saw this one movie nerd uh, reviewing the movie and I've seen a couple people do it and they're using this term fan service as a slur. Um, it's it's I've heard it used before, but now they're like all using it together as a slur to mean that like something cheap happened in the film. Hmm. And um, I don't know. It really bugs me because this movie obviously is from a very long line franchise of films. And so they, recreated a couple scenes they recreated a couple famous dialogue tracks they, from the franchise and it, it contorts to wedge itself in you know uh they chronologically in. into funny. the lore they do yeah. their thing there's there's images and shots from other from other alien movies in this movie that that they recreated what's that beeping the dehumidifiers uh tank is full oh great no that's someone backing up outside oh okay yeah i can see yeah. the truck okay uh it's a fedex truck okay right on time um but, but yeah so there's a lot of like nods to the old alien movies and stuff in this one and a lot of the movie fanboy nerds on tiktok where i've seen them are like ripping it apart as quote unquote fan service as a cheap gimmick and i'm like for me personally as a fan that's a that's what i want like i like fan service yeah. fan service is not a read to me fan service is a compliment well, I read something of, of talking about like referring to so many Easter eggs in the movie, which, you know, can be rewarding for those that find them. Um, they did refer to one sort of rotten uh, Easter egg in the movie, which I will not spoil on this podcast because I, I just don't want to do that for anybody. Um, but uh, it is a thing that we talked about as being like an interesting thing, but also it's not perfectly done. Yeah. Um, and there's a, um, a weird. There's a special effect. There's a weird quality level of special effects in this movie that you're like, that looks so bad there's some uncanny problems um oh uncanny valley yeah there's some uncanny valley problems i would say uh yeah. but yeah it's and it's weird and it's a distraction that didn't need to be there they, there were other ways to write around that mm -hmm. um but like seriously i had so much fun and i mean seriously like and like i'm not that guy normally that like at theaters if i sensed that an alien romulus trailer was coming on i would literally close my eyes cover my ears and sort of like lightly yeah. hum to myself until Todd would tap me to be like, it's done. Cause I just, I literally wanted to be, I didn't know. I didn't know who was in it. Like I didn't know who was in it. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know anything. So it was fun getting to go in as a blank slate. And at one point at the very, like a little bit in Todd looks at me, he's like, how long is this movie? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Usually like, you have the technical details down. I, I, I knew nothing. I didn't even look to see if there was a post credit scene until the credits started at the end. <laughs> I was like, I don't know anything about this movie. Um, and seriously, it was so much fun. I had like, but all I knew was basically that it was from the director of evil dead and um, don't breathe. And I was like, sold approved. I cannot yeah. think of a better person to carry the baton of the alien movies. I love him. Seriously. Like Fede, was it Fede Alvarez? Alvarez. Yeah. Oh, Seriously, well, like, and, dude, anything you want to make, I'm going to see. What's funny is um, it does approach, I love you, I cherish you, I hold space for you in my heart, but it does sometimes approach levels of annoying 
that I'm just like, he was like, oh, I hope there's not an alien trailer. And I, just, I was just like, then leave. Just go out in the lobby. I'll come out and get you when it's over. Just leave. I, I'm going to see it. I like trailers. Like, I just was like, well, I, I can't deal with this right now. It was just, I mean, it's not like I'm going to like go Gah! and like yell or anything. It's not like I'm going to ruin it for anybody else. It's just a matter of like, well, for me, I just hope that I don't have to do that thing where I have to like literally look like I'm you know, uh, having like a minor breakdown where I'm closing my eyes and covering my ears or like, like looks like I'm afraid of this trailer. Like well, what's funny. I think know. one of the reasons why it bugs me so much with your like annoyance with trailers is because for a long time you worked at one of the biggest trailer houses in Hollywood. You literally worked for the trailer house that made all of these trailers. Yeah. Your friends made these trailers, and your I love former them. employees. And I love employers. and support them. Good job guys. Yeah. But it's it's always so weird, especially when you worked there, like you worked in a trailer house that made these big trailers and you're like, oh, I hate trailers. I don't want to see them. And I'm like, you work there. Well, and it's funny. And there's some movies I want to know more about. And there are some movies that I, I need to be sold, sold to. Yeah. Like, and then there are some movies where I do think that being surprised is part of the fun. And, um, and yeah, and I feel like Alien is, is the franchise. It's the franchise that I feel like surprise is the name of the game and hey, um, i get it when yeah. i worked at the chocolate store i ended up hating chocolate it happens <laughs> no yeah, seriously like i just you know like when you work in the field for long enough you start to understand how they're built and you start to be able to reverse engineer to kind of understand what the movie's going to give you and i don't want to i don't want that sometimes yeah but um but yeah like although seriously like you even told me that some of the trailers you you found to be like scary you know, like of, of the marketing, this, yeah. the marketing was, I was scary. Like, these should have been red band trailers. Like they showed some pretty <laughs> oh, graphic well, violence. And many of them were because they had lots of swears. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh man. Yeah, seriously. It, I cannot. Also, it was a beautiful movie. I thought it was beautiful. And it also fits perfectly into the franchise, yeah. into the timeline. I had such a good time. And it just, it, yeah, it gives us another cool leading lady. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I was into it. Like, seriously. I loved it. Yeah, like highly recommend go see it if you yeah, if I don't you wanna... like if you like the Alien franchise or if you just like good you know space scary movies it's really good yeah go it's it's it. it's a juicy movie though so if you are not into gore no <laughs> yeah it's it's uh yeah trigger warning uh spider creatures and <laughs> juicy gore and lots of suggestive designs because you know it's got the it's got the DNA of the original yeah um and it's got the DNA of the original designer in it so there's lots of suggestive stuff. there's a lot of alien nussies in this movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah seriously oh it's so it's so funny yeah, if, if you're if you're into it I don't think you'll be disappointed. Go see it. Yeah. The other cool thing that happened in Seattle this weekend, we mentioned it at the top of the show. Yeah. It rained finally. Uh, a lot of people don't realize in Seattle, it does not rain in the summer. It also doesn't really rain that much throughout the year. It's just kind of cloudy and uh, like a heavy mist, almost like a heavy fog. But like actual raindrops falling from the sky, it's rare in Seattle. And I when think they do, they're, they're small raindrops. Like they're the kind that. Yeah, we don't get the big fat thunderstorm raindrops like you get in the Midwest. Like. The, these in the car sounded like hail almost like hail yeah yeah like they were like smacking the car i was like oh shit this is like a good old down on the farm thunderstorm yeah. we don't get those in the seriously Seattle. like big drops just do, 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 like on the car like hard and it was so we where were we oh we went to target yeah we we're like hey do you want to get out of the house and just not be in the house and go outside and be in public let's go to target also i got <laughs> i got influenced by all of the uh people posting about clearance records at target and of course like i decided that we should go so late after seeing so many days of those posts that literally got there and i think there were i think literally all the clearance records were gone. There were three titles. Yeah. Three. Three of them. I bought one of them. Uh, the other one was Justin Timberlake. No, thank you. And the other one was uh, Morgan Wallen. Hard Absolutely no, thank, no you. thank you. Like a um, hard, hard no thank you. Yeah. Like I could have maybe flipped that because it was literally $50 down to 15 and I would still rather not. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to profit don't, off that don't, asshole. Don't bring it in the home. So, uh, but yeah. It, uh, we like, went on a Target run. Also, yeah. my birthday is coming up. My birthday is next week. And my mom Woo. sent me a Target gift card. And, you know, that's always burning a hole in my pocket. So when you were like, you want to go to Target? I was like, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, let's go. Um, so I got a new perfume that I've been wanting to get, or fragrance. Um, and I got a little organizer. And then I got something else. There was a third a book. thing. Oh, yeah, I got a book. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Can't wait to never read it. Because so apparently that's what I do with books Just now. use it to hold down the tables <laughs> like you do with all your other books. I, just, so I, I need to know these stories. And yes, I know Audible exists. We have so many credits. I could listen to all these books. Uh -huh. Will I? 
probably not. Um, but yeah, I love a good target run. And then as we're coming home, it just like, it starts to mist and then we get a couple drops. And then by the time we hit our neighborhood, big old drops, hardcore rain. And you can tell, I mean, I check the weather probably 20 times a day. So I knew something was coming. Well, and I've gotten out of the habit. I used to all the time, but since it hasn't rained for months, I just stopped looking. And, but I'm a chronic weather checker and that almost sounds like a slur, but I'm a (laughs) chronic weather checker. And, uh, I knew something was coming, but we got back to our neighborhood and there were just people out and about clearly just stuck in this deluge. Well, and also like, as we were driving back, I mean, every what, 18 seconds, or something i would just go whoa because lightning Lightning, which we never get lightning seriously lightning is such a rarity and it was just blowing up the sky just like the west coast in general we never got lightning in la i was there for 15 years and we got lightning maybe three times it's it was honestly it was scary it was honestly scary it It happened so infrequently especially thunder because it's always usually dry desert lightning which doesn't usually crack that loud yeah if if you get booming sounds in la you're like oh someone got struck by lightning. right it it feels like doom and that's kind of like up here too it was so loud but i know that there were lightning strikes in the city like i saw a tiktok of a tree in capitol hill that got struck and exploded like lightning was striking the city and the space needle i saw a a really pretty picture someone got of lightning striking the space needle so it was like a heavy duty electric storm but then it also came with the rain which we never get those combinations and so i sat outside in the driveway in our in the garage and just listened to it for like an hour and then so nice well and then we came upstairs and watched a movie and like we didn't turn any lights on in the living room just so we could see the lightning flashes still which of course like what literally two minutes into the movie that was when the lightning flash came and the power went out power cycled um but then at least we made it through the rest of the movie um but yeah like we had windows open so we could hear the the rain sounds and see the flashes of everything happening outside that's the thing too just the rain is never heavy enough to hear it even if the windows are open you don't get that like delicious rain sound like you need an awning or like a deck for them to hit and uh you know especially like a lot of our neighborhood the houses are built where most of the living quarters are kind of like a half a floor over yeah. the lawns like it's you know, a lot of split levels yeah you're kind of so you can't hear the rain hitting the ground yeah but you're not like a full floor but like you're kind of elevated enough to just sort of be distanced from the ground i've been tempted to get some kind of like board or something from the hardware store and just attach it outside the window so when it rains you can actually hear just the get drops. an old umbrella and just you know attach it to the, <laughs> yeah. the corner of the house there just so you can hear the pitter patter of it yeah Because that was one of my favorite things in L.A. when it did actually rain in L.A. is that you could usually hear it really well. Oh, yeah. Well, because everything is paved. Yeah. And we had uh, like which we have here, but it doesn't stick out far enough. The We have a window air conditioner and the, our ones in LA, like there were no gutters or anything above it. So the window air conditioner was just completely exposed to the rain. So when Drum it rained, set. it was just like, oh, just <laughs> a beautiful tap dance on that air conditioner. Um, and for me growing up in Missouri, our house is out in the middle of the woods. Uh, my parents' house has a uh, tin, like aluminum roof, so it was like extra amplifying. Well, so, like, I used to fall asleep to the rain all the time when I was a kid. When the house also has like a wraparound deck, so yeah. like any window you open, you have like a surface, like a foot and a half down, that you know is prepared yeah. to to echo sound. Back you can hear at you. the rain tapping off of everything. Yeah. And again, my parents' house is in the middle of the woods, surrounded by trees, so you hear the rain hitting the leaves, and it's just loud and beautiful and um yeah so it was nice to get that last night and because it hasn't rained in over a month we got that delicious petrichor which is one of my favorite smells it's such a magical like moment in time smell because it only exists for about 30 minutes of a rainstorm and then it just goes away and it was crazy i felt it lasted longer than usual last night i think because the rain started so slowly um that it didn't have a chance to like wash away the petrichor smell. So it kind of lingered. Oh, it was delicious. And you know, for me, a person that's obsessed with scents and scent memory, we literally bought a scent at target for you. Like smells are very much attached to my mood and my memory. And so just sitting outside, listening, seeing, smelling, it was everything a girl could want. It was very nice. Well, having said that, I think it's time to move on to our final segment. This has been a fun episode. Right. Um, and it's going to get even funner because it's time for what's your order? What's your order? Most funnest. Get a picture of that. Most oh, funnest. Most fun. Real smart, Loretta. Most um, funnest. I have here. Best damn tapper. Our trusty blue rip and dip shoebox refilled. We oh! emptied it last week. I have refilled it with like 
over 10 new things getting very specific now we're going we're like we've pretty much done every restaurant known to man there is one new restaurant in here that we've never talked about are you doing ingredients now like parmesan cheese and we just talk about what we would put it on well we're not doing that but we are getting specific to things that you will see i'm not going to spoil it robert um okay so but without further ado you are going to choose today's don't look don't you dare look. You are going to choose today's topic, which will be brr, 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 drum roll. And it is things you will never eat. Ah, bing, 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 bing. I thought this one was fun. I Man, thought about I feel this. like this is like, uh, I could answer so many things for this. This is like you with breakfast last week. <laughs> this is your, this is your breakfast. Uh, I thought about this when we were at the movie. I was like, wait a minute, that would be a good topic. Like, we always talk about our favorite foods and things we love to eat. But there are lists of things. I mean, mine's pretty short. Yours is going to be. You guys, I hope you packed a lunch because we're going to be here a while. Uh, I, can at least, I think I can speak in broad generalizations enough to sort of categorize things, I hope. Well, I'll, we'll go, I'll go first because mine's yeah, pretty let's, short. Yeah, let's go with you. So, first of all, a thing I will never eat. And trigger warning. I will never eat anything involving a head. I will not. I know people like to eat whole shrimp heads. I won't do it. I know people like to eat like roasted pig and cow heads. Now, I will eat cheek meat and tongue, like lingua, in tacos and stuff if it's like processed and I don't see where it's coming from. Yeah, it needs to be a little uh, one degree away from like the head. Yeah. But there are places and it's just so barbaric to me i don't know why but like there are restaurants in la where you can like order a roasted pig head and you just pick the meat off of it and i'm like are you kidding me are you fully joking right now that is so barbaric and animalistic and disgusting to me i won't do it different strokes but yeah not not for me either and i i I get i know some people like culturally eat the head and they're they're different traditions but like for me personally i feel like we have to separate ourselves from the animals a little bit we have to have a little bit it's not even morality it's just like you know don't eat something's head it's the head and then that falls in line with the other thing that i will never eat which is brains i will never eat brains and brains is like a big midwest uh, midwestern thing especially like cow brains because you know cow farmers are everywhere and when you buy a cow you can have it all processed and people do like uh, scrambled eggs and brains it's a big thing and then like fried brain sandwiches i won't do it i'm not eating the the powerhouse of the cell it's disgusting i i think it's like i don't know it's just too i keep going back to barbaric but it's just too animalistic and just like it I'm, doesn't feel right and i don't believe in anything so it's not like a spiritual thing but i do know that like mad i think mad cow disease is transmitted if you eat the brain and then there are other diseases that have like come about it's almost like you can't be a cannibal because there's diseases if you eat humans it'll like literally make you sick there are diseases that come about from eating brains and i won't do it this conversation is already terrible but it's food people fucking eat. I know. And that's what makes I me know. mad about it. Uh, okay. It's so fucking you, gross. You don't have to get mad. It's just um, not for you. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Uh. But yeah, I'm I'm not gonna eat a head of anything. It's small or large. Like I like I said, people like to just eat shrimp heads. Can't do it. I won't do it. Uh, and then I guess the last thing is yeah, just like organs and stuff. I've I've tried them. I've dabbled, but I don't need to do that. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's mostly animal products. Uh, that I just re- I can't do it. I refuse to do it, and I will never do it. And then the other thing is, we've talked about it before: seaweed paper. I'll eat it like in a sushi. I'll eat it if I have to. I won't do a hand roll because that's majority seaweed paper. And then when people just eat the little seaweed paper snacks, yeah, seaweed. I can't do it. Seaweed's something I've never developed a taste for, and like, yeah, I can make it work in a sushi roll, but hand rolls are so dry. It's like yeah. you put it in your mouth, and it's just cool. Your mouth is now one with seaweed, and the food is just sort of like bouncing around. That's the but thing like, too. You, seaweed all you paper are seaweed. sheets like yeah. disintegrate into flakes so quickly, like it like crackles, like it's like old dry paint. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Uh, the the light on that recorder keeps coming and going, and it weirds me out. But uh, we're, I think we're fine. It's still moving. I can see yeah, it. Yeah, it's still recording. It just came on for some reason. Yeah, no, it, it came on earlier and then it just went off. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But, um, yeah, sorry if I gross anybody out. No, uh, sorry. But I'm not eating a head, honey. I'm not doing it. Well, luckily, no one is making us do anything here. Cause, Stop it. What? No, I was like, <laughs> ugh. Uh, uh, yeah, no, thank you. Um, what won't you eat? 
Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm just, I'm like, I don't know. It's, I feel like. You can start with the big three nevers. I know, but like, it's so weird. Like as, as an adult looking back, I'm like, oh man, there are preferences. And then there's also just like, you have kind of, uh, strange phobia problems but no but these are like honestly like these are things where um like literally the smell of them makes me gag and it's just even like being around them is is a, is a lot for me um because it just kind of makes me un- physically uncomfortable yeah um and that is mustard uh yellow mustard in particular especially like you know i can hang out with dijon and stuff but like yellow is just it's there's something about the smell and the, even like the color there's something a lot about it that just kind of gets to me um pickles any variety i don't care if they're sweet other option dill other options pickles are just cabbage not- carrots radishes no, it's honestly, nothing you can you can uh, i can do it like a quick pickle on like uh what daikon and carrot because i love a banh mi but like we're not talking like pickly pickle 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 like from a jar yeah um and uh so like uh but pickles especially though like the cucumber based ones are just um they are a day ruiner for me um and yeah especially like and uh relish which i refer to as abc pickles because they are just kind of chopped up um and of course then they get in everything uh but yeah like there's that's a big one um but yeah it's like there's lots of i'm just not a big fan of that i never developed a taste for that a lot of people love like i don't care for ranch dressing um i don't yeah, you know, it's not for me. My friends are listening right now. I know that you're all being like, "How did you guys make it to 13 years of marriage?" I'll tell you how. More ranch for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that. That's it. I get twice of it. I get double of everything because you're not taking any of it. Yeah. Um. And it's weird. Like I don't know if I. I think I just growing up as like a the a baby of a family, but also kind of like a latchkey kid that took care of themselves a lot. I made I made a lot of like eggs and stuff but like i never developed a a taste and we never really had the supply of like lunch meat so like i I, like a lot of lunch meats i find too uh processy and too like briny and just kind of unpleasant um yeah like you it's almost like me with seaweed paper i'll eat it if it's prepared for me in a sushi for you like you love a roast beef sandwich you at you know you love a sandwich from subway but someone else has to do all the touching and all the making and all the wrapping and even then if but also like i there's something about like the you know just the the lunch meat that comes in the sort of resealable oscar meyer container that just it has that sort of taste to it that it just feels very it's like it's like the the chemical place the taste that's in a hot dog and like i don't eat hot dogs i don't care for the actual taste of the meat i wonder itself. if it's like if, if it's like the smoked meat or if it's the salt or yeah or what's the word that because you do randomly like all of a sudden out of nowhere you will walk into a room take my turkey out of the refrigerator and just start eating turkey lunch meat and i'm like who yeah. the fuck are Which, you where did this come from but, but it's like but like baloney like there's a lot of like yeah you don't like the super nitratey porky products yeah that is, i think that's it it's like so i've never really developed a taste for like a lot of like sausages or even like hot dog kind of stuff just because like there's a lot of times there's just extra mayhem in there that i'm not into mm. um yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I'm I'm a picky eater. I will fully admit that. Like, but yeah, anything that's kind of super briny, like pickles, olives, not a huge fan of. Uh, or olives are kind of a turn off food. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. There's a lot. I, I feel like a weirdo, and it's just like, and you know, it because that's hard. Well, you're not weird. That's just how your brain works. I know, but and because I, I have a lot of like anxiety about eating in groups, uh, especially like a potluck situation. Usually, I just say thank you and. Uh, you know, say I starve, already, say, and then say I already ate, uh, you know, or just kind of pick at stuff. But like, there's, uh, you know, th- there's a lot and it's fine. Like the pressure of people kind of coming at me with food, um, and just kind of try it, try it, try it, try it just makes it worse. You, that does not help. I don't know who would, would, would find that effective or helpful in any way. So if you are a person who is a pusher of something on someone who is hesitant for the experience, you can stop. I think a lot of it comes from uh, people assume you've never tried it. And so they think you're being a child and being like, no, 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 I don't, I don't like pickles. And they're like, no, if you try it, then you will understand. But they don't realize you already have a history with all this shit. Yeah. And so like you already, so I think instead of saying no, thank you, or I'm full being like, hello, I have a bad history with pickles. I'm not going to try it. And then no one will ever say, try yeah. it again. Well, and even then it's one of those things where it's like, and then there's some things I haven't tried, but like, I literally can't get them past my nose because the smell is so intense. And I don't think I'm like a super smeller or anything like that. But like, <laughs> there, but there are some things where it's like, oh man, is just, it's enough to be like, I get, get it away. I, I can't even, Yeah, you know, but it is so funny that like 
most of the foods you hate are the foods I love and eat constantly. Yeah, and well, we and more for you. Yeah, more for me. And we've gotten to the point where it's just like I'm going to do it, and you can remove yourself from the situation if yeah. you so choose. Yeah, it's, I've I've learned how to navigate a world where people can yeah. do stuff that I'm not super into. Yeah. Like and, that's a, uh, that's part of growing up and just managing when to remove yourself from a situation that like m- you, you might be uncomfortable from. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've, I've joked before, I've said it before, you know, living with a picky eater is like having being in a thruple, like the, the, <laughs> the picky eating is like a third par- partner in our <laughs> marriage that we just have to deal with and we have to cater yeah. to them. Well, I feel bad. I feel like the last 10 minutes has been me super tense. Cause I've just been like, <laughs> just like about talking this. about pickles makes like, you God, on edge. It's just, there's something about it. And like, and I've seen the clips of the people who are on Maury who have like disproportionately crazy, like I don't say crazy, but disproportionately, um, appearingly performative phobias of like cotton balls, mustard, pickles. I've seen a lot of my, I don't have a problem with cotton balls. That was, <laughs> that was one that just comes to mind because it's one of, that's the one where I'm always like, oh, come on. But no, 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 no. Everyone else on that like same episode that had problems with that I have a problem with, I'm like, oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Like I get it. Well, and you do, it's not so much a phobia. Like I feel like you're not like literally no, afraid yeah, of I don't these start things. sobbing or anything. I'm not I'm not I'm not shutting down yeah. fully, but like I am very much like I think I do go a little rigid and like I very much start to like breathe through my mouth and like I make a point to like kind of adjust what I'm doing. Yeah. You're like <gasps> A pickle has entered the room. No, it's I, weird. I, I, gotta I, go. I do have like odd radar, but like I can smell like that particular profile. Well, I mean, I'll get it. I guess another thing I can add to my list is tombstone frozen pizza because oh, Marie Callender's See, yeah, Marie yeah. Callender's pot pie. Yeah. I have a lot of uh like <laughs> you know, lack for lack of a better term, food trauma associated with specific things. You know, like the last thing you eat before you get the flu or before you get oh, food poisoning or something. Yes. My brain is just like, mm, never again. And I'm one time when I was in high school, I just got really sick after eating a tombstone frozen pizza and my brain just shut it off. I'll never do it again. So, you know what did that for me for a while? Boston Market, which bummed me out. Cause like this is during like the Boston Market height. When like it was, they were available and like they were pretty rocking and they were well cheap. great. Guess I need to take that out of the box. No, no, no. I mean, kidding, I'm just kidding. And I was like, I, I, I <laughs> what still, a specific restaurant. I still think very fondly of them, but it was one of the things where like it took a while for me to overcome that. Yeah, because like I, um, I don't know what happened, but I got something, and I don't know if it was from Boston Market because it was ve- like immediately after. So I think it usually takes a couple more hours than that. No details, but no, no. I, like in general, uh, I am someone who does not tend to. Have stomach problems. I, I, or I, yeah, like, you don't or get sick. I'll carry around stomach problems and just feel sick for days, and nothing will really come of it. Like, yeah. but I'm just a person who kind of knows how to manage that experience, and I would rather be nauseated and uncomfortable than actually like do anything to end it. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, literally, went to Boston Market, and I was up all night just feeling terrible and like feeling like something might happen, but nothing ever did. And then literally I had my first like marching band competition the following day. And I was amazed how weak I was from a night of just sweating and shaking and freaking out and not sleeping. And so like, because of that, I had a little bit of like a Boston market PTSD thing. Although I did end up finding my way back into their establishments and they found their way back into my good graces. Now they're gone everywhere. So I have a story like that yeah. about Kukuru. Uh, oh, man. And, Remember Kukuru? Ugh, I'd rather not. Um, <laughs> but then, like, by the time I got over it, they all went out of business. So, so never, hey, ne- didn't need a redemption. Who's laughing? I did have one redemption, though, and that was Subway. Uh, mm. In high school, we did a theater, like, speech debate uh, trip to another school. And on the way home, we stopped at a truck stop and we all got Subway. Mm. And then we literally all of us got food poisoning. So oh. it was like the Subway. We knew that's where it came from. Yeah. But uh, luckily, my brain just autocorrected, and uh, it did not banish Subway forever because that would have sucked. I eat right? so much Subway, and it's weird because yeah, like, and it definitely, I go through like, let's talk about something at least you know, quick pivot of stuff that I do love. Like, I tend to go ham on like a food item that I'm into for a while to the point where then I won't eat it for a while. Like, I'm just yeah. like, I can't, I cannot. I'm like burned out. But that's like a very different topic, and that's like not a thing I would never eat. It's just a thing I can't eat for probably like six weeks yeah I'll be we back. can hyper focus on food like i mean there's been times where we had chipotle five times in a week oh yeah like and I, like you do i i think i get it from you i think you do yeah. it more than i do yeah i think like yeah you are um amenable to my 
habits. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I can have a Costco chicken bake every single day for two months. Yeah. <laughs> Which but I can. I've gotten more comfortable saying no. Cause like you'll literally four days of Chipotle in a row and you'll be like, you want to go to Chipotle? And I'll just be like, no, we're not going to Chipotle. Stop it. It'd be one thing if they had, if they were a place that actually had like multiple options of things, right? It's all the same food. It's all the same. It's all the same in different forms. I, I Meanwhile, no that's another thing with that. You rarely change up your order anywhere. Like no. you always get the same thing everywhere. So, although I am often more open to a seasonal item, like there's a thing of like, well, I'll you try do. that. Thing. You will do that sometimes. You know, but uh, what I'm surprised is you, the, it's almost like the great changeover. You went from bowls to burritos, and you haven't gone back. You used to only do bowls. I know. I'm I'm very surprised by it too. And but seriously, I think I've realized that the bowl is honestly too much food. And, it is more food than a yeah, burrito, and the um, and also and you would also get a tortilla. Well, yeah, and like the uh, the mix of it just makes it way too cold, and like the burrito really is. It's a great limiting device, and like the weird outward heat factor with the cold <laughs> pockets inside. There's something very special. I, there's a special sauce to a burrito that like I I'm sorry that I abandoned it for so long because there is well, like a special thing there. But if you roll it badly, it can ruin the whole experience. Yeah, that's one of my things with Chipotle is like. It's always cold. It gets cold so fast because we never eat in the restaurant. I can't remember the last time we went to a Chipotle, had the food made, and ate it there. So, like, by the time you get home, even though we live close to a Chipotle, by the time you get home, it's all cold. So, I've taken to microwaving my burrito to warm it up, and it's helping. Also, for a while, though, you did no rice, which I think rice is a huge heat factor. Like, it helps keep that that, that heat going longer than, like, so, yeah, if you don't have it. And I still don't really do a lot of rice. Uh, I only do rice now if I'm, like, super hungry and I just need to, like, bulk up my order. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, uh, if if you've ever had problems with a Chipotle burrito, like, being wrapped wrong and exploding and, and falling all over the place, don't get the rice. And then it's like a normal sized burrito that you can manage. I say, and yeah, meanwhile, I'm a, like, I get rice, but I don't get beans. So I, I end yeah. up with the same kind of uh, space saving win. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, you kind of got like, it is a helpful to kind of pick one of oh, those grains. Now I kind of want Chipotle. Oh, I do. Oh, but we have like so much food to make right now. I know. Seriously. We have a lot of, we have a lot of thawed <laughs> meat that we need to work with. Right? I, like, I took a lot of stuff out of the freezer and I was like, oh, we can't put it back. So yeah, like it's time to, to use it or yeah. lose it. But um, yeah, well, Thanks for listening to our ick episode. Like that, I, there's nothing else in the box that's going to be gross at, for me, at least. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be a good topic to be like, oh, what's something I refuse to eat? Yeah, no, that's a. Uh, it, it is interesting, I and mean, like, and definitely, your all your your don't want to eats are all kind of of the same place. Yeah, they're all of the same category. Yeah, growing up, I had a texture problem. Like, I could not eat tomatoes. I mm. hate that because I can't do the slime. I wouldn't I wouldn't even consider like an oyster, a lot of seafood. Like I had a very big problem with like texture, but luckily that's all gone now. Is it growing up I used to gag on sour cream? Like oh, it was it was honey, too much. Because she was so eleganza. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was gagged and gooped. Uh no, but it's funny. Like I growing up, uh sour cream was like this odd quality that just kind of made me almost uncom- like kind of sick. But uh now, oh my god, d- sour cream, that's like a food group. Like uh, th- Sour cream, you ASAP. Like, seriously, yeah. Um, yeah. The texture is a big deal for a lot of people. Some people have death, deathly phobic fears of mayonnaise, which I don't understand, because mayonnaise is God tier. Well, and we have talked about this, at least, like, in that um, I, growing up, I was lied to. I was misled. I was given a sandwich, and I hated it. And I was like, what is on this? And they were like, oh, it's mayo. And I was like, oh, I don't like mayo. And then I found out later, that was Miracle Whip. Oh, you got bamboozled. Yeah. And Miracle Whip and Mayo are not the same thing. I say it all the time. I, I'm i a Miracle Whip fan, well, but it is not mayonnaise. It's different. And at least, and I do feel like the world has moved on and kind of accepted they are two very different things. You cannot say, like, you may call all sodas Cokes. You don't call Miracle Whip Mayo. Yeah. Like, I think we've come to, we've, we've evolved as a people. I mean, it's the equivalent of saying, like, hey, I got you McDonald's, and then you open it up, and it's just a burger they made in their kitchen, and be like... Just because it has Thousand Island on it does not make it McDonald's. You are a liar, sir. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like, it's one of those where I'm like, eh. you know. But anyway, well, Sorry. that was our that was our thirty second episode. Sorry, yeah. I would like to leave you with the, hey, the longest ap- outro ever. Don't apologize. Okay. <laughs>
It's okay. It happens to a lot of people. It happens to a lot of guys. It's oh, very normal. Oh, 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 um, no. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Uh, we're cutting it a tiny bit short today because it's a billion degrees in here. <laughs> I'm so shiny you're, and sweaty. I mean, you're sitting right next to a roaring fire. I know. I, I need to start like showing some kind of iceberg or also, maybe a fish tank. The, the problem is I do think that TV gives off a little bit of heat too. Does it? Mm, maybe. A little I bit. think I give off more heat. Because I'm on fire right now. But thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Don't ref- don't remember, forget. And that's not the word, Todd. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share and tell your friends. And uh, keep coming back. And it works keep commenting. If you work it. Thank you, everybody, for doing yeah, that. Thanks for the suggestions. Thanks for the comments. And uh, we have a pretty exciting episode next week. The next episode, our first real guest, my How best friend dare Kendra. You? Your co host, bitch. Oh, sorry. Okay. But our first real guest, my best friend of all time, Kendra, will be in town for my birthday. And yeah. she's going to be a guest on the pod. And I'm very excited to talk to her uh, because, like I said, she's my food soulmate. So we're going to have a real good time talking about food and restaurants. Am I also going to be here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, That's why I, I bought a third microphone. Oh, I wasn't sure if I pivoted out or not. So okay, so no, we no, just, no. Oh, so we just. Thought, but it will, it will fine. look different because we're gonna film it somewhere else. We have to reframe a bit. Yeah, we're gonna film it in a different position. But um, yeah, That'd hope you guys fun. are having. A, hope you guys are having a great week, and we can't wait to talk to you next week. Um, having said all that, we love you. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.